it turns down a little bit. Hold on. Music's a little distracting to me. Okay. That's oh, a little bit too quiet, though. Balancing out my levels a bit. Yeah, that's probably fine. Okay. So, today, we begin our journey with Rust. A grand journey with Rust because it is perhaps the leading industry standard now due to Joe Biden's administration putting out a paper talking about the future of our cybersecurity as a nation in the United States. So, did a little bit of reading on it. Not super uh, familiar with Rust, um, but I did go ahead and install it on my computer. Uh, my goal by the end of the stream would be hopefully to get this thing blinking. Uh, maybe not blinking, but at least programs using the Rust tool chain because that would at least get us to the starting point that we kind of were a few streams ago. Shouldn't have to change too, too much um, because of some of the tools that I've seen. But I think we can, I think we can just go ahead and start. Go right to it. Stack pointer onto this, or maybe it's the other way around. I have to refresh on my arm. I kind of forgot my arm a bit, arm assembly. Um, block load. Breadboard setup you have as part of a kit. So this, this actually is separate from this. I bought this STM32. It's a Nucleo development board. Um, or sorry, a Nucleo development board. Or I said it again. An STM development board called the Nucleo U575. Yeah, it's, it's the name of the chip. It's uh, not very creative. But anyways, this is a development board. Just like you'd get Raspberry Pi. Um, just like you'd get an Arduino Uno, that's technically a development board in my eyes because you have the chip that's on a larger platform. Raspberry Pi is, I guess, a little bit of a different situation since they only sell you the whole module. Um, I guess with the Pico, Raspberry Pi Pico, you could buy just the chip, but um, I don't think people really buy just the broadband chip that's on the Raspberry Pi 4s, for example. So this is its own development thing. This is a separate tool I have that is actually a all-in-one unit for lots of different things. There's a, obviously there's a breadboard on it, but there is a logic analyzer built in, a function generator built in. There's oscilloscopes built in. Um, these two ports are for waveforms to go out if you have a BNC connector. These two are for oscilloscope connections. If Again, if you have a BNC connector. Um, there's some switches here to toggle on different power supplies that come out of this these channels up here. So it's hard to see right now, but um, I have a... What do I have? I have five volts coming out of one channel and ground coming out of this other channel. And I can turn... I can turn it on with this third switch. And you see this, oh, it's really hard to see on the camera. I should get a different camera set up. <laughs> but anyways, um, this LED came on, there's a five volt power supply channel, so I can give power to my circuit and the breadboard really simply. There's some buttons, there's some switches as well. So it's kind of just like an all one thing. And the best part of all of that is that the actual tool to connect to it is through your computer so you can serially talk to it and capture lots of different things it's a pretty nifty tool i really enjoy using it it's helped me out with a couple different development things i haven't gotten to use it super long but i can already see its value this one is called the STM, no, not STM. Let me go to the web page real quick. This is the Analog Discovery Studio. It's this thing right here. It's, uh, you don't have to get, okay, well, for one, it is pricey, um, but I kind of saved up for it. And 
If you don't get the BNC probes, it's the lower amount. If you get the BNC probes, it comes. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, but I haven't needed to use them yet. But yeah, it's, it's just kind of like, I was in a situation where I didn't really have a breadboard that was, that I could trust. I couldn't really trust this thing, or sorry, trust the other breadboards I had. So I was like, okay, let me try and invest in a better one. And then I came across this, I was like, why not get a tool with the breadboard? And uh, here I am. It also has a USB port on the side here, which I mean, I'm using to power this camera, but theoretically you could use this port to power your board directly. So that way you don't have to have some crazy wires. Yeah, no, it's a pretty sick product. In fact, this is a huge plug for their business. So, you know, Digilent, if you wanna help me out, I would I would be a good spokesman for this, pers for this uh, device because I think it's a really solid device for learning and testing out stuff. Definitely more targeted towards towards um, students and yeah. It comes with the scope, yeah. Buy once, cry once. Yeah, exactly. Like it's been maybe six months since I bought it. So I kind of already forgot about the, the hurt it did to my wallet. So we're good. I'll look, okay, I guess you can just buy one just straight up. Hold on, if this picture would load, that'd be good. What is this? Okay. This looks like it plugs in. I haven't seen this before. So if you wanted to have a soldered breadboard, cause like there's other stuff on this. What do we got here? Some ICs that I don't quite recognize. Maybe that's for soldering practice. Oh, these are different package sizes. Oh, okay. If you wanted to solder a circuit onto that and you and plug it into the same studio thing you could. I do work in the embedded industry, yeah. I uh, at my embedded job, I kind of have my own tools over there. So this is more for like my own personal projects. Um, if I ever did like consulting or side work, this is kind of what that would be for. Or even just developing on stream, you know, it's just a handy tool to have. So that's kind of why I got it. Looks like this one might be one without the, oh, I see. So this is the canvas I have, quote unquote. I see. So you can have different modules. That's kind of cool. Cool little idea they have for making it more usable. Even comes with, you can even buy a case, funny enough. Uh, I don't know how, how often I would be transporting this thing. And to be fair, I feel like they should have just sold you this case when you bought it <laughs> uh, instead it just came in a box but uh, all right I mean shoot maybe just 3d print your own box at that point <laughs> I don't know anyway so yeah um, I'll put the link to this actually in the chat if anyone's interested in looking it on their own they seem to have a lot of different parts that you can buy too I'll get back to that here we go yeah here's the link to that Okay. So, looked at the disassembly a little bit. Do they have any important notes? That target, usually I use extended remote as well. But let me try that this time as, as it's what I'm used to. Okay, sure, that's fine. We're gonna hit load to reload the code in. Monitor, I wonder if it's a do the remonitor thing. Arm semi hosting. Oh gosh, see. Yeah, when you press tab, it does that weird, that weird um, entering thing. Not sure why. Semi hosting, enable. And then, break main. T. 
continue step. Okay, we halted one. I'm not mistaken. We should have saw it. When they hit step. Advancing the program with next. Oh. Is that what I needed? Oh, shoot. Okay. There it is. Hello world. We officially did it. Rust is officially on the STM. Granted, I just followed the tutorial, but it's running Rust. There's no longer a need for C. See you later. See you later.